writing these word problems. So the first one is solving a word problem involving a sum of another basic relationship using a system of linear equations. Okay, now I gotta write this big paragraph down. So, add a foot bogey. Alrighty then, that was a lot of writing. Okay, two minutes, that's not too bad for all that writing. <laughs> so here it says, a football game, at a football game, a vendor sold a combined total of 193 sodas and hot dogs. The number of sodas sold was 39 more than the number of hot dogs sold. Find the number of sodas sold and the number of hot dogs sold. This bottom equation, I mean bottom sentence, is what they're asking you for right the top sentence is going to give you one equation the middle sentence is going to give you a second equation and you need two in order to solve the system right so i'm going to try to use colors here it says at the football game i really don't care where this happened right <laughs> so i'm not going to underline this a vendor sold a combined total of 193 sodas and hot dogs you can use whatever letters you want. I choose, if I can, I like to choose relevant variables like S and H, right, for sodas and hot dogs, okay? But how do I write that as an equation? The total combined of 193 sodas and hot dogs. I just write S plus H equals S plus H equals Yes, exactly. Good. Now the second sentence says, the number of sodas sold was, that's important, 39 more than the number of hot dogs sold. If you see the word was or is, that is your equal sign, okay? So what came before the word was? Soda. Number of sodas, so S. What came after the word was? The number. 39 more than the number of hot dogs sold. How do I write 39 more than the number of hot dogs sold? 39 plus H. 39 plus H. Exactly. Now look at this. Which method is it set up for? Is it set up for substitution or elimination? You already got one guy all by himself, right? So it's set up for substitution. So instead of S here, I'm going to use this expression. Remember, you gotta take what you have and put it into the other guy, okay? So then that means this is gonna become S, no, not S, S is changing, right? It's gonna be 39H plus H. 39 plus H, that's just S, but you still got this guy, right? Yep. Plus this H equal to 193. I like to use parentheses, so this was my S, my plus H equal to 193, right? But there's nothing in here to multiply, no exponent to give to it. So really, 
Basically, I don't need those parentheses. So I can just combine my like terms. So I have two H's. Mm -hmm. Now I know I'll get an even number because those are two odds, but I just don't know what. 154. And then if I divide by two, it's 70 something, 77. So now I know that there were 77 hot dogs sold, right? And wherever the blank is for hot dogs, that's where you would type in the 77, okay? But then, once I have that, I have to go back to this expression, right? Mm -hmm. So then this becomes S equals 39 plus 77. What is that? 116. Yep. And so then there were 116 sodas sold. And you can always change the letters. You can make them whatever you want. If you wanted to use X and Y, that's fine. But if you do use something else that's not apparent, I would always ex want you to label what you let the letters equal because it's real easy to forget which letter represents what, okay? So I could have used X and Y, but at the very beginning, if I had chosen to do that, I would have literally said X equals the number of sodas and Y equals the number of hot dogs. And then I could have used X and Y in my equation. And then that way when I was done and I saw X and Y, I would know which one was which. Got me? Okay. So it's okay to use whatever variables. And I'm mentioning this because sometimes they will force you to use certain variables. Okay. And so this helps to remember what those letters stand for if you label at the very beginning. Okay. Let's go get another word problem. They're all going to be very similar to that. So one equation is going to, one sentence is going to give you one equation, the other sentence will give you the other equation, okay? So make sure you pay attention to that kind of relationship. Now let's try one of these. So this is, they're going to phrase them a little bit different. Solving a word problem using a system of linear equations of the form ax plus by equals c. Well, you kind of get to cheat a little bit because it tells you in the title what, <laughs> what they should look like. One month, Christine rented three movies and five video games for a total $34. The next month she rented nine movies and seven video games for a total of $56. Find the rental cost for each movie and each video game. Okay, let me go back to my camera. Okay. So the same thing here. The bottom sentence is telling me what I'm supposed to be finding, right? And the first sentence is going to give me one equation, and the second sentence is going to give me a second equation, okay? Now, I do know what the totals are going to be. So for the first equation, She's renting three movies and five video games for a total of $34. Total is kind of my key word, right? Doesn't that mean it's going to equal $34? So I know this side. What I need to figure out is what I'm doing over here. If I'm renting three movies, I'm going to say this. 
Let me use a very uh, pen here. I'm gonna say the cost for each movie. I'm gonna use the letter M, okay? And then the cost for each video game, I'm gonna use the letter V. Make sense, right? So if I'm paying for these three movies, don't I have to, am I, aren't I gonna get charged that cost for each of those three movies? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna multiply three movies times that cost plus five video games times the video game cost, right? And then that should add up to $34. Now the second equation is very similar, just different numbers, isn't it? So rented nine movies and seven video games for a total of 56. So I know my total, but this time I have to pay nine times the cost for a movie, and I have to pay seven times the cost for a video game. Because each one is gonna cost me however much, right? I just don't know how much, because that's what we're trying to find. But this one, is not set up for sub I mean elimination, right? There's no guy all by himself, okay? So this one is probably easiest to just do the, um, the one, the elimination, the elimination one, right? Where you cross one out. So then let's see, we can take, I like to just do the guys in the front just because they're right there, right? So I'm gonna do nine for this one and three for that one, but does one of them need to turn negative? Yep. Yeah, because they're both positive Positive. right now, right? I'm just going to make the bottom one. I could also do the top. It don't matter. You can't just, uh, like, you can't just uh, subtract them. Subtract, like, so multiply the, the top equation by three, all of them by three. You could. That would subtract. be using the least common multiple. Mm -hmm. And you can do the least common multiple, but you don't have to do the least common multiple. Okay. I'm just doing what I can do that requires the least amount of thinking. So if I just use that guy, use that guy, you I don't have to worry so about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, if you see all the patterns in it, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> you can make things easier for yourself. So I'm going to get 18M plus 45V equal to, who knows what, 9 times. Oh, thank you. And then the bottom one, this one's got a negative though. So negative 18M, negative 21V, and then negative something or another. 168. So I combine them. The M's knock out. I get 24V and 130. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. Hopefully I can divide by 20. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I get decimals. That's okay. Yep. So if I divide by 24. I get V equals 575, which still makes sense, right? It's money, right? And what do I do with that V? Plug it back into your equation. Mm -hmm. And you can pick whichever one. I'm going to pick the top one. So I have 3M plus 5, and now I know what V is equal to 34. So let's see, multiply that by 5. I get 28.75 and then if I minus that to the other side let's see 34 minus 28.75 I get 525 and if I divide that by 3 oops divide by 3 I get 175 I don't know if y'all were around when Buster was around, but that kind of makes sense. The video games always were rented for more than the, yeah, <laughs> than right. the movies. Yeah. <laughs> so it obviously costs $1.75 to rent a movie, and it costs $5.75 to rent a video game. And they never told me what letter to use, so I didn't have to worry about that. I could use M and V just like I want to, right? Okay, so two down. I think we still have a few more to go. Um, one, two, three, four. We have four more. So we're getting there. Let me write down this one. 
It says solving a word problem using a using what? <laughs> You got some time. I'll be here for a minute. <laughs> Maybe I should pause the video while I'm doing right? Pause. Pause it. Okay. So it says solving a word problem using a system of linear equations of the form y equals mx plus b. So again, there's your kind of your hint, right? It is what these are going to look like. Um, it kind of just plays out like that as well. Because remember, each sentence usually tells us an equation right so the first sentence is just really explaining what's going on it's saying this the sugar sweet company will choose from two companies to transport its sugar to market there's really no numerical information in there it's just to give me the basis of the situation but the second sentence says the first company charges this amount to rent trucks plus an additional fee of 75 25 for each ton of sugar okay so company a is going to do that i can use y but if i do i have to be careful why don't we just use for like a truck what the trucks are t for truck or? you could well no you can't so I'm basically going to have the first company, I'll call it company A, right? Okay. I'm trying to think what variables to use here. Because I think I'm just going to use... You have it set up in that slope so mm -hmm. I think I'm going to use C, for okay. C for cost. So the cost for the A, the first one, right, is they're going to charge you $3,159 to rent the truck. That's just a flat fee. Yeah. Okay, plus they're going to charge you $75.25 for each ton of sugar. So yes, you could use T for the ton of sugar, right? Yeah. And instead of the word cost, I could simplify that even further, right? And just say C, the cost, right? Then for the second one, I'm going to call that one company B. The second company does not charge to rent the truck. So the cost is not going to include a charge to rent the truck, but it is going to include $250.75 for each ton of sugar that's delivered, right? It just doesn't have that truck charge on there. And so let me go back because I didn't really write down the questions here, but it says, for what amount of sugar do the two companies charge the same? So what are we doing with these equations if we want to know when they charge the same? We basically want to know when that cost equals that cost, right? So how could I write that in one big long equation? Wouldn't I just take this guy's charges and, subtract them from the last one? and equal them oh, okay. to the other guy's charges because it wants to know when they are the same, right? Same is another word for equal. So when company A charges the exact same as company B, right? And then from there, it's just a regular equation. So you could solve it however you want to solve it. What would you do first? Uh, can you subtract the, the, I don't know. I would take uh, the 75, 25 from both sides. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then divide by that coefficient. And, yep. So I get T all by itself. Yeah, 
18. 18. And T yeah. represents what? Your trucks. No, it does not. I mean, your tons. Your tons. Yes, your tons, my tons, tons of tons, sugar. Tons of so sugar. it would be 18 tons of sugar. That's at the same cost. Mm hmm. That's how many tons of sugar we can uh, transport. And I will pay the same no matter which company I go with. Right. Right? Okay. But then how much is it, how much am I going to pay? I know how much, how many tons I'm going to transport. To plug that but how eight, am I going to pay? How much to, am I going to pay? You're going to have to plug that 18 in for your, for your tons with the 75, 25, right. and then the... Not here. You have to choose oh, either okay. the top equation or the bottom equation. Oh, that's right. It don't matter which yeah. one, but because they're the same, aren't they going to be the same? The bottom one since it's got it's shorter. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So twenty five fifty times seventy five or point seventy five times that eighteen. I get four five one three point five, but that's the same as four thousand five hundred and thirteen and fifty cents, right? When you have to just point five, well, that's a lot of sugar. <laughs> tons, you're tons. That's thirty six thousand pounds of sugar. It's like ridiculous. Okay, so I'm gonna put my job in a play on this. So what I do with my job is say my job comes in and we do sugar. Mm -hmm. So when my sugar comes in and on this bill of lading it has you know the bricks and all of that and what it, the temp is mm -hmm. so then it has this weight over here and it might tell you the weight of that trailer mm -hmm. you know from nose to rear is you know 52,000 mm -hmm. 40 so just in my training like to figure how many gallons that is in mine mm -hmm. so when I was getting trained we'll take 11.5466 1. and divide it by that total weight and that gives you how many gallons is in that trailer I don't know. No, you do I'm it that trying, way or you do it the other way. I was just trying to plug it in for like what we do. How can we plug? How can I plug that into my job? That's all. Well, that is a different problem. That yeah, doesn't require two variables. Yeah, that that's just different. is yeah. one yeah. one yeah. computation and that's it. Okay. Yeah. You should ask your job. Yeah, create some word like, problems over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see value mixture problems some more word problems but these are different so let me write down let me pause the video real quick so I can write down the problem and pause okay so here it says solving a value mixture problem using a system of linear equations now they don't tell you what the equations are gonna look like okay so you really have to piece it together here and this one is another level of weird because each sentence doesn't tell me a separate equation. They kind of give me half of the equation in one sentence and then give me everything in the next sentence, okay? So <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated as far as trying to pick it apart. It says, suppose that there are two types of tickets to a show. So I have advance, I'm gonna use an A, and then I have same day, I'm gonna use an S, okay? It says advance tickets cost $25, and same day tickets cost $15. So I know how much they cost, right? But that's not enough to write an equation because I don't know how they're related to each other or anything, okay? But it does say that for one performance, there were 45 tickets sold in all. And the total amount paid for them was $975. And then the question is, how many tickets of each type were sold? So you actually have all the information you need in that middle sentence for both equations, okay? If I sold 45 tickets in all, that means the number of advanced tickets plus the number of same day tickets should be equaling that 45 tickets total, right? And if I'm talking about the total cost, well then I already know. I know that I'm gonna have to pay $25 for every advanced ticket I have, plus I'm gonna have to pay 15 bucks for all the same days, and that should give me the 975 that was total for all the tickets, right? So it's a little bit different than what we've been doing. You really have to think about this one a little bit, okay? But it is ready 
I could just take, is it really gonna matter if I take the bottom equation and I multiply it by one? It's not gonna do no, nothing, not right? <laughs> so don't do that. Just multiply the top one by 25. But do I need to make it a negative 25? Yes, yep. So then this becomes negative 25A, negative 25S, and then, oh gosh, I don't know, negative 25 times 45 is this huge number. And the bottom one's just going to stay exactly the same because I did not do anything to it. The A's will cancel out. I'll get negative 10S. equal to negative 150 and if I divide by negative 10 I'll get that s equals 15 what do I do with that 15 plug it back into either one of them equations mm -hmm. I like the top one right. so a plus 15 equals 45 yep. subtract 15 from both sides mm -hmm. and we get a equals 30 so what does that mean? What do these numbers 15 and 30 mean? That means uh, it was 30 adult tickets sold. Advanced, but yes, I almost said adult too myself. Yeah, I mean, advanced tickets. Advanced tickets. Uh -huh. 15 same day tickets. Right. And then both of them together, that's how you get your 975. Right. Yeah. Sure, what's up? Uh, the math you don't have to. But I should still go. If you want to. Okay, cool. <laughs> Will you be there? Oh, he didn't hear me. I can't say yes. <laughs> it's like, you need to go, but it's important. There's a lot of, they're going to talk about a lot of opportunities. Um, okay, that was that one. I think all they do is change the situation around, but it's the same thing. Like this guy, the mechanic worked for 10 hours, then he worked for 5 hours, and he was charged a total of that much. And then it tells you the sum of the two rates was this. So you do the same thing. You have one rate for the first one, X, one rate for the second one, Y, that's 165. Then 10 times X, 5 times Y will give you your total $1,200, right? So it's just different situations, but the same similar setup, okay? Um, these are weird too. I'm just waiting to get to the, this train travels this fast and exiting this, that's the hair in there. <laughs> we gotta do those problems. Okay, let me pause the video so I can write and then we, Okay, so this one is solving a percent mixture problem using a system of linear equations. Again, no help on how these are going to look. We just have to kind of make sense of the situations. So this is a lot like the other one where they don't give you all the information in one sentence and then the other information in another sentence. It's kind of just broken out. It's all in there, but you got to piece it together. So it says, a chef is going to use a mixture of two brands of Italian dressing. The first brand contains 9% vinegar and the second brand contains 14% vinegar. The chef wants to make 280 milliliters of a dressing that is 12% vinegar. How much of each brand should she use? They don't tell me the variables either and there's nothing really different other than first and second that I have going on here, right? So you could use F and S if you wanted to or X and Y, it really doesn't matter, okay? Um, but Based on my question, how much of each brand should be used? I am going to use F and S, but F is going to be the number of, I'm just going to put ML for milliliters, of the first brand. And then the second one will be S, but this is the number of milliliters of the second brand. Because that's how much, right? And that's the only measurement I'm given of how much, right, is milliliters. So that just helps me so when I'm solving and I'm trying to put this together, I kind of know what I'm talking about, right?
right? It does tell me that it's supposed to be a total of 280 milliliters. That's helpful because however much I put of this one plus however much I put of that one shouldn't be any more than the 80, the 280, right? Okay, good. The other one's a little bit harder, okay? It's the percent mix. So essentially what happens is you want, um, you want, how much of vinegar does this one have? 9%? 9% on the first one. So that's 0 0.09 times however much of the first one you have. Plus 14% is just 0 0.14 yeah. times however much of that one you have. And then you should get a total of 12% of the total amount, 280. So you're basically taking that equation, but using the certain percents you're supposed to be using, right? So you gotta start off with that first one and then just put in all the percents, okay? And that's why it's helpful to put these units here because then I know that the only number I could use here is more milliliters, right? If I add two different milliliters together, I'm gonna get more milliliters. And then you can solve it using that method, right? If this has got a 0 0.09 and that one doesn't, I could multiply it by a 0 0.09, couldn't I? Yep. But I just need to make it opposite sign. Yep. So I'm gonna make it a negative, okay? So then this is going to be negative 0 0.09, this is going to be negative 0 0.09s, and then that's going to be, who knows what, negative 0 0.09 times 280 is going to be negative 25.2. I need to figure out what this is too, 0.12 times 280. This number there is actually 33.6. This number here. So when I put these two things together, these two guys, these are going to cancel, right? What's 0 0.14 minus 0 0.09? 0 0.05, right? Uh huh. And then 33.6, because that multiplied to give me 33.6, but if I take away. 25.2, I get 88.4. Then you divide. So 8.4 divided by 0 0.05 gives me 168. That makes sense. It's not any more than 280, right? So it could be that amount. If you get like a super huge number, right, then it wouldn't make any sense, right? because you can't have more than 280, right? So you'll know something went wrong in your math. But if I take that and I plug it into the top equation, I have F plus 168 equal to 280. So I just gotta figure out how much I can put in there left, right? Yep. 280 minus 168 is 112. So then I know I'm going to have 102 milliliters of the first brand. And then S was for second, right? So 168 milliliters of the second brand. So the percent mixture problems, really you got to figure out how to write the total first and then just put all the percentages that go with it. Okay, each one will have their own percentage, right? Okay, let me pause because I gotta write this. So this one is a distance rate time problem using a system of linear equations. Now, I'm gonna look later once I do this problem to see if there's any other kind of variation that may be really different from it, just so that I can do those two. But if they're all like this, then I won't need to do a second example, okay? Um, but this one says a motorboat takes five hours to travel 200 miles going upstream. The return trip takes four hours going downstream. What is the rate of the boat in still water? And what is the rate of the current? Okay. Now the easiest way you can do these problems, and I suggest you do it, get used to writing these boxes, because when the problems get harder, these boxes are really necessary. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a box, and I'm going to write 
three columns here because you're going to have distance, rate, and time. There I go, running out of ink. See, told you. Every class. <laughs> okay. Not only that, but you're going to have two different sections in this box. Okay? Because you have two different things happening. You're in a boat on a river or whatever. It doesn't tell you what you're on. Um, but you're in the water, right? And you've got two different things happening in the water. You're either going upstream or you're going downstream. When it comes to aircraft, because we will get some of those too, it's the same situation. It's just you're going with the wind and against the wind, right? Okay. So it's not really that much of a difference as far as labeling, okay? Now, I do need to know the distance. If I'm going upstream, how far am I traveling going upstream? Hmm, first sentence tells me, right? I'm going 200 miles going upstream. So this I know is just a flat 200. What about downstream? It doesn't tell you what you're going downstream. It does. It just doesn't explicitly tell you. The return trip takes four hours to uh -huh. go downstream. What just stop the after those first three words. The, the return, return trip. The return trip. What does that mean then? You're going back. Uh-huh. So how many miles am I going? If it took me... I went from point A to point B and it took me 200 miles. 100. If I'm going from point B back to point A, it's still the same distance, so isn't it? Okay. Right? right? So this one's also 200 miles, but it's hidden in there, right? You have to remember, return means it's the same distance. Okay. Then they ask you for the rate. Now the rate is a little weird here because you have a rate, your motorboat has its own rate. It's going fast right but the water is also moving at the same time okay so there's two different rates going on here and that's what they're asking you for right they're asking you for the rate of the water and the rate of the boat so you can use W and you can use B or I would actually use B for boat and then I would use C for current okay so those are gonna be my letters here I'm gonna use B for my boat and then I'm gonna use C for my current now you have to think about it a little bit if I'm going upstream, is the water helping me go faster or is it slowing me down? Because yeah. mm -hmm, the water is going in the opposite, the opposite direction, direction, right? Yeah. So then that means that my rate would be however fast I'm going, it's going to slow me down however fast the water is going. Okay? And if I'm going downstream, I'm going in the same direction of the water, so it's going to help me go faster, faster. isn't it? Yep. So then it would be my boat's rate and my current's rate would help me go faster, right? Yep. So minus if it's slower, plus if it's making you go faster, okay? Think about it for a second before I continue. If you're in a plane and you're going against the wind, is that going to be a minus or a plus? Minus. Mm -hmm. And if you're going with the wind, is it going to be minus or a plus? A plus. It's going to help me go faster. faster. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now time. Does it tell me how? Long I'm traveling upstream. Yep. Five hours. Five hours. Yep. Does it tell me how long I'm traveling downstream? Yeah, four, hours. four hours. Now here's where you need the big, big equation. The formula is distance equals rate, rate times time. Times time. Yep. Okay? So that means that my top equation is going to come from this top box. 200 equals B minus C times five. The bottom is going to be 200 equals B plus C times four. And I think you were asking about one of these one time, the backwards distributing. It's okay. multiplied, right? So I do need to distribute. So my equations are actually 200 equals 5B minus 5C and then 200 equals 4B plus 4C. And so I can do elimination here, right, to help me cancel things out. Um, I'm going to do the one on the side because the letters are not in the front like before. So I'm going to do the guy in the back. I'm going to take this 5 and put it down here. I'm going to take that 4 and I'm going to put it up there. Do I need to put negatives? Yeah. Are these guys already going to cancel or not? 
They won't. They're going to be 20. I'm going to end up with negative 20, 20 and, and positive, positive 20, 20 right? right? So they're already going to cancel. Okay. So I do not need to put any more negatives because then that's going to undo uh, my okay, job, right? You have the minus. You have the minus. Right. Okay. One plus, one minus. One minus. Okay. So let's see what do we get here. That's going to be 800 equal to 20B minus 20C. Yep. This is going to be 1,000 equal to 20B plus, plus 20C. Those are going to knock each other out. 40B. Mm -hmm. 1,800 equals 40B. Forty-five. 45. And then you plug that into any one of the equations. I'm just going to pick. Actually, I'm going to have to solve for C, aren't I? So I'm going to pick the bottom one because it doesn't have a negative. It doesn't matter, but I'm just being picky. So then I'm going to get, what is that, 180? And then if I minus the 180, 20, 20 equals to 4C, mm -hmm. divide by 4. Wow. Only thing that would have been different is I would have had to divide by negative 5, right, if I chose the top one. So it's the same thing. So I get C, oh, that's not negative. I said negative and I confused myself. <laughs> the 20 divided by 4 is just five right so then now I know the boat is going 45 what kind of thing is it it's miles and hours right so the boats is going 45 miles per hour and the current is traveling only five miles per hour okay what does so it tell you miles per hour? only because it says miles and hours so I know my speed, right, oh, okay. would be miles per hour. Sometimes it's feet per second, right? It just depends on whatever the units are. Okay, now I'm going to go to the Alex screen just to see if we have different... I want to know if this is going to look different, okay? Because I know the, the scenario may be different, but this part might be the same, okay? Just with different numbers. So let me look at them and see if they're very similar or if they are completely different from each other. Yeah, that one's different. Okay, I have to do this one. <laughs> Let's do that one. Let me go pause the video so I can know what did it do. Okay, good. Okay, so this one says two airplanes leave an airport at the same time and travel in opposite directions. So here's a little airport. This one's going in that direction. That one's going in that direction, right? It says one plane travels 72 kilometers per hour slower than the other one. So I can tell you something about the rates. If I let one of the rates be X, right? This one, I guess, is going to be the faster one. Then the slower one would be that guy's rate minus 72, right? Now be careful because I could have chosen the other way around. I could have also chosen to put the slower one on top and call that one X, but then the faster one would have been X plus 72. So you have to be careful with your labeling and what operation you choose to use. Remember, the slower one needs to have a smaller number, the faster one needs to have a bigger number, right? Okay. Then it says if the two planes are 7,940 seven, 7, kilometers apart, so that means this whole thing is 7,940 kilometers. After five hours, what is the rate of each plane? So I do know the time, and I know that the time is the same, right? What I don't know is the distance. All I know is the total distance. I don't know how far this one went and how far that one went. I don't, okay? So this one is a little bit different. What I do know is that the faster guy's distance plus the slower guy's distance, it should equal this 7940, right? I also have everything I need to figure out what the distance of the fast one looks like and what the distance of the slower one looks like. Because look at this formula up here, 
right? Distance is the rate times the time. What do I get when I do x times 5? Five? 5x. Five x. So I know this guy, what he looks like. It's 5x. What about here? What do I get when I do this rate times that time? You actually have to distribute, don't you? 5x. Something. 72 times 5. 360. So now I know what that guy looks like. 5x minus 360. And these two guys together so should make... Yeah. Right. So you combine your like terms, you get 10x minus 360 equal to that number they gave me. Add your 360. I get 10x equals 8300. Divide by 10, divide by 10. I get x equals 830. So remember, what is x? x is the rate of the faster guy, right? Yep. So the faster plane is going 830, what does it use? Kilometers per hour? And then that means that the slower plane is going how much? Uh, you're going to take 830 and add it and take away 72. Mm -hmm. Which equals 758. So the slower one is going 758 kilometers per hour. Just make sure you put those numbers in the correct boxes, right? It'll say slower and faster. You just have to know where to put the numbers. Okay, let me pause. So we'll stop it here.